Hi everybody. Um, tonight's topic is the joys of cronehood. When I was younger, I used to think cronehood was going to be, um, you know, there's a desolate time where your hoo-ha dries up and your face falls and you start well, wearing double-knit polyester. You know, you get your hair cut in those little curly golden girl cuts. <laughs> oh, I could not have been more wrong. If you are um, younger, you haven't reached cronehood yet, let's say 50 years old or so, um, this might be a bit of a shock to you unless you have older women in your life that have been sort of role models for this, but um, I didn't really. And so I was shocked to find out a number of things about being you know, being through my reproductive years, um, post-menopausal and, you know, 50-something and what that was all going to look and feel like. Um, for me, it has been nothing but pleasant surprises, honestly. And I think it's because, and it just, just occurred to me tonight, that there is a time in cronehood, in early cronehood, where your childbearing years are behind you, but there's still, you've retained a certain, I don't know, juiciness or ripeness that hasn't, um, hasn't left you yet. And it's, there's a certain sexiness that um, clings to you and it can, it can go on for years. I mean, I'm 55 and in, I'm, I feel like I'm still right in the thick of that. Um, Abigail is 66 and it hasn't left her yet. Um, and it is a wonderful time for a lot of reasons. Um, almost all of them having to do with men. <laughs> so, uh, one thing is that you look back and you suddenly realize that men are no longer just people that you date or you dated, you're married to or were married to. Um, um, they're not just sexual partners or potential sexual partners. You realize that you've got male friends that somehow you've made along the way, real live, honest to God, platonic male friends. And they are platonic because you made sure that they were. Um, almost all of them had hit on you at one time or another, but at early cronehood you learn how to gracefully control the sexual tension between you and men. At least that's what's happened to me. And I've seen it happen to a lot of my friends as well. And it is a um, it is a very powerful place to be. Um, the first woman that I ever s noticed doing that is my friend Beverly. Um, Beverly Green, Baby B, is a, a performer. She's a singer um, and a drummer, and we've been in bands together. Um, she, um, you know, has a day job as well, but who she is and what she is is this kind of larger-than-life blues and rock and uh, um, R&B and soul singer and pretty accomplished um, a drummer as well. And she and I were often the rhythm section for various bands that we played in back in the day. Um, and I watched her at 50, 55, just get hit on by every guy in the bar when we were playing somewhere. I mean, everyone from the 18-year-old that snuck in to his, you know, 62-year-old grandfather. <laughs> she had, and still has to this day, um, and I think she just turned 60, because I think she's five years older than I am, still has this rightness to her that men find irresistible. Um, and she is really the one who taught me, just by um, observation, how to um, how to say no gracefully and stay in control. So, thank you, Miss Bev. I hope you watch this video someday because um, you know you were my you were my uh, wingman on teaching me all of that. 
Um, another thing that you discover um, is that, or I discovered, is that I just don't take men all that seriously anymore. And what I mean by that is I'm no longer having to have babies or raise kids or try to provide for people other than myself. I can provide for myself. So now um, the relationships that I have with men, the relationship that I have with my husband, for, for example, is um, on a much more even playing field. We connect um, based more on how we feel about things, our attitudes, the stuff we like to do for fun. Um, it's, it's far more um, person-to-person -person kind of connection, not so much a um, sexual biology reason for connecting. Um, also, ironically enough, um, I found that the the way you relate, the way I relate to my mate sexually is much more, uh, with much more grace, confidence, humor, relaxation, um, uh, sort of this kind of even temperedness that wasn't present when I was younger. When I was younger, everything mattered. Um, um, now it's, um, I don't know, it's a sweeter place to be in. I, I don't really even have words to explain it, but it is better. Um, and you, and I would hear from older women, you know, after their kids grew up and moved away, I would hear them say, you know, now that you know, Johnny's off to college and I've turned his bedroom into a sewing room and Ed and I are out, you know, traveling around in our RV. It's like we've discovered one another all over again. And I'm beginning to understand what what those women were trying to say, how your relationship um, with your with your mate, um, if, he's a, if he's a boy, if he's a male, um, how that um, can change. Um, which brings me to another point. I, I don't know how it feels um, for lesbian women who are um, in their early cronehood. I imagine it's fairly similar. Um, my, um, my close lesbian friends, I have one who just recently um, got into a new relationship and she, that relationship that she has with her new girlfriend is very, has a very similar flavor to the relationship that I have with my husband. So I'm guessing that there, that a lot of that same stuff, it's not so much, it's not really gender uh, specific. It's more has to do with um, how we relate to people and to our mates, regardless if, if we're a straight or, or lesbian. Um, I, I'm loving this time so much because I get, it's like having your cake and eating it too. You're old, you're smart, um, you're relaxed, you're confident, you're in far more control than you ever were before, but yet life is still fun and there are, um, you know, that whole exciting tension of, of, I don't know, flirting and, and being, feeling and being and acting attractive, um, it's, it's all still there. And so I'm loving it. And I don't know how many years it'll go on for me. Um, I imagine I'm a lot like Abigail and Beverly. I have a feeling it will last for me for, you know, at least 10 years. I, I imagine I'll start to feel it waning when I'm in my early 60s, probably. Um, although <laughs> Abigail's 66 and it hasn't waned for her one bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, Cronehood is pretty good. Um, uh, speaking of Abigail, I want to show you something. She made me something that is so cool, you guys. Check this out. She made me a felted vulture. She created a totem of my totem. <laughs> 
for me. And I absolutely love it. Look at its wonderful little beady eyes and its perfect little beak and its cute little tail feathers. It's so darling. And what I want to be able to do is, you know, kind of perch it up here on my shoulder somehow so that when I vlog, I can have my totem vulture with me at all times. I just love this thing. I think it is so cool. God bless her for this. Isn't it great? So I have to put it somewhere where Mallory absolutely cannot get to it. So it's going up on a high shelf. Um, last thing I want to share with you all. Well, I want to share my eye makeup with you. I'm going, I, I'm doing, I did no mascara and no false eyelashes. Instead, I did really glittery shadow and then lined my waterline. So it's, um, it's kind of a different look for me and I really like it. I don't know if you can see it. I didn't do the greatest job and it's wearing off, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the last thing I want to share is the book that I'm going to start reading. Um, it's e Edith Wharton's The Age of Innocence. Um, gosh, she writes sort of heart, heart wrenching um, books. Um, I read and have read The House of Mirth several times. That's it's a real tear-jerking book. But I've never read The Age of Innocence, which is, I think, far more, um, she's far more well-known for this one. So I'm going to read this. And um, that's about that. So for all of you women who are afraid of, you know, menopause and you're afraid of your 50s and your 60s and you're going to be, if you're afraid you're going to be like, oh God, you know, it's over. <laughs> it ain't over, honestly. So. You guys have a wonderful day, night, whatever. I love you all. Talk to you later. Bye.